Okay, so in this video we're going to try to figure out how to solve a system using the TI-84. And the, the key here is we're going to graph it first. So, um, in order to graph stuff, remember you want to hit the Y equals button, which is over here on the top. I can't write on the actual screen where the calculator is, just so you know. So here's y equals. And everything has to be in y equals form. So if you look over at our two equations, the first one, we're already, we're gonna have to rearrange that one. The second one is already in good shape because it's already y equals. So let's take the first one and we'll figure out a better way of writing that. So I'm gonna rewrite this down here. 2x minus 5y equals 10. And so we'll isolate the y. So first, negative 5y equals 10 minus 2x. And then we divide by negative 5. And again, you don't actually have to do the division yourself. The calculator is not going to care. So I'm going to write it in like this. So this will be my first equation, and my second equation will stay the same. So now I'm going to come over to the calculator here, and I'm in my y equals screen, and I'm going to type in open parentheses 10 minus 2x, close parentheses, divided by, and then remember it's negative 5, not minus 5, so the negative symbol is way down here at the bottom below the 3, negative and I'll hit enter. And so then y2 is this one down below here. So I'll enter that one in. So that's already y equals. And I'll hit the x button. Remember the x button is a special button up here. And then square it. And so you can square it two ways. You can hit that caret symbol squared. Or, let me do it again, you can also do x and then hit this button over here. That's a shortcut for squared. Okay. Uh, if you did the first way, you get this superscript, and then the cursor's still there. So to get it out of there, just hit right, and then it becomes a normal cursor again. And so we want x squared divided by 3 minus 5. In this case, it's a minus 5, not a negative 5 there. And so I'll hit enter. Okay. Then if we graph it, Here's the picture of the graph. It should look just like the one that's in the bottom corner here. So I'll go back to that thing, but you can hit the graph button to see it. And you see it crosses once here on the left and once here on the right. So now the goal is to actually get those intersection points. Um, so remember the key here is gonna be, I'm gonna minimize this for a second. The key here is that we need to get to the calc menu. So again, the way that works is we're going to go to second calc. We're going to find the intersect feature. And then we have to answer three questions. First curve, second curve, and guess. Okay. So. Let me put this over here. All right, so we'll bring this back up. Okay, so second calc, sorry. Second calc menu. Okay, so the calc menu is the fourth button in the top row, but it's in blue on mine, so I have to hit the blue button first. Second calc. And then you can see intersect is the fifth feature here, so I'm either going to scroll down to five or just hit the number five. Either way, it doesn't matter. So there we go, intersect. And now it's going to ask me three questions. It's going to ask me which two things do I want to look at, because it can only handle two curves at a time. In this case, I only have two things graphed. If I had three or four, I have to tell it which ones to look at. Um, so it's already on one of the two two curves. Now this one's a line, but the calculator doesn't know if it's a line or a curve, so I'm just going to say, yeah, there's my first curve. Uh, it doesn't matter where I mark it on there, so I'm just going to hit enter. And then second curve, okay, it's on the parabola now, the U shape, so that's good. I'm going to hit enter. So now I've marked my two curves. Now the guess is the important part. That's where you want to move the cursor. So 
either I'm going to guess here or I'm going to guess here. Let's say I want to get the left one first. That's why I moved the cursor over here for guess. So you can see I'm hitting left until I get reasonably close. It doesn't have to be perfect. There it is. I'll hit enter. And there's my intersection point. So right here I'll write down on the side negative 2.459 comma negative 2.938. OK? Uh, so that's one. So if we do it again for the other one, so I have to go all the way back to second calc, find option five here. Whoops, I went too far. I'm just going to hit five. Uh, so now I'm going to mark the curves again. So I'm on the line right now, so there's my first one. Now I'm on the parabola, so there's my second one. And then for guess, if I guess over here again, it'll probably find that point. So I want to move the cursor way over to this other intersection point and then hit enter over here. So now it'll search this area and there's my new intersection point, which is 3.659 and negative 0.536. And there we go. Okay. So common mistakes, all right? One common thing that happens is you get an error because way up here at the top, these plots are turned on. And you'll notice over here in my graph section, it now says invalid dimension. That would, that would happen if you hit graph and any of those were turned on up there. So make sure those are off. Next most common mistake is this one. You hit a minus instead of a negative. Whoops. Minus 5. Now look down here. It says syntax error. Okay. Whenever you get that, I'll get it on my main screen here. It says syntax error. Go to it. Okay. If you go to the syntax error, it tells you, look, it thinks there's a mistake right there. So then usually you can figure out, okay, that should be a negative instead. So those are the two most common mistakes. Um, if you're having a window that doesn't show up very well for some reason, and what you want to do is go to Zoom for now. Eventually, we'll figure out better ways of doing this. But go to Zoom and find Zoom 6, the standard window. And it'll always get you back to 10 on the top, negative 10 on the bottom, negative 10 over here, 10 over there. Okay? Hope that helps.